YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at drones, specifically the DJI Mavic Mini 2. I'm going to clarify in this video why I believe the DJI Mavic Mini 2, the sub 250 gram category of drones, is going to be the best drone going into the next year and beyond. And why I believe now is the perfect time to invest if you don't already own a drone. This video is going to focus on the sub 250 gram category of drones. We're going to be looking at the brand new ESA regulations which come into force at the end of this month, the 31st of December 2020. Britain will be adopting these regulations before we leave the European Union on the 1st of January. Um, we're going to be looking at the DJI Mavic Mini 2 specifications and why I believe it's the best drone available in that category. And I'll be answering questions on drone registration, privacy, GDPR and other questions. Right now is the golden era for drones. With great innovation, lots of market competition, DJI is still the market leaders. Behind me I've got their, one of their original Phantom Series drones which made the company famous. But there's lots of strong competition coming from Parrot, Autel, Skydo and even Sony have just entered the drone market. Um, the DIY self-build modding community is really strong and there's even specialist retailers catering for that as well which is really nice to see. The applications for drones have become ever more established from aerial photography, commercial surveillance, 3D drone racing, this trajectory will likely rise um, in the coming years as traditional manned aircraft will likely be replaced by drones entirely. For example, aerial photography, we're already seeing this now. However, in the next few years, the incoming ESA uh, and FAA regulations will mandate uh, design specifications, they'll curtail certain functionality uh, they'll limit certain performance and they'll introduce safety um, mandates and other security mechanisms which will restrict what you can and what you can't do and what type of drones you can buy depending on what category you're going to be operating in. Um, this video I'm going to focus on the DJI Mavic Mini 2 and why it's the best consumer drone available. The new ESA drone regulations are centred on risk. This is largely based on the maximum takeoff mass of the aircraft and which is illustrated in categories A1 to A3 and C0 to C4. With A1, C0 having the least regulatory restrictions and A3, C4 the most restrictive and controlled. In the UK, the Mini 2 will natively fall within the A1, C0 legacy category because the Civil Aviation Authority has interpreted the maximum takeoff mass to be the flying weight of the aircraft. So this means you're going to get all the benefits of that category to fly over people, etc. And this will also apply to any aircraft in the sub 250 gram category, which are placed on the market before January the 1st, 2023. In Europe, the situation is slightly different. They are actually using the maximum takeoff mass, in which case the DJI Mini 2 would fall in the A1 transitional category, which means there's additional stipulations. It can't fly over people or within 50 meters etc and there's also a date limitation on that of two years those drones would then naturally go to the a3 category which means you can't fly within 150 meters of people why is the a1 sub 250 gram category of drones so important and what can you do with the mini 2 the sub 250 gram category has no date limitation you can use this indefinitely moving forward two years and beyond you can legally fly over uninvolved people with no separation distances. You can fly over and within residential areas, commercial areas, um, industrial areas and recreational areas. What this basically means is you can fly in villages, towns, parks, anywhere there isn't bylaws uh, potentially stopping you from flying. Although even if there are bylaws, you can still take off from public land or land outside those bylaws and fly over the land within those bylaws. The bylaws only control the taking off from their land. They do not control the airspace above, which is uh, public space effectively. However, you still must fly in visual line of sight. This is generally understood to be 500 meters from the operator, unless you have a designated person with like a radio or a telephone, and then you can go to extended distances. You must not fly above 120 meters of the ground directly below the aircraft. Uh, bear in mind the instruments from DJI will give you the uh, height from where you took off, not from where you actually are with the drone. You must not fly over assemblies of people. This is quite a tricky one. People seem, don't, seem to understand what this actually means. 
This generally means places like football stadiums where movement is confined and people can't get out of the way if the drone is about to crash. The regulations state over, so you can still fly near to groups of people, just not directly overhead. Uh, th that being said, it'd be close to impossible for anyone to actually verify how close you are, because um, it's very difficult for a third party observer to uh, estimate your height and your distance from people anyway. So providing you're not doing anything stupid, you should be fine. And the limitations include not allowing to drop articles or dangerous goods. In other words, you're not allowed to bomb your local village. <laughs> you must not fly in danger areas, restricted areas or prohibited areas or any other flight restriction zone. Generally, this means airports, military zones and basically protected areas. However, if you want to know where these zones and places are, you can use third party apps. I recommend Drone Assist, UEV for Forecast which will help you uh, prepare for where you can and can't fly and also give you additional data like weather information and basically give you an indicator of whether it's safe to fly or not. They're really good. Links will be in the description of this video. So why is the DJI Mini 2 the best drone you can currently buy? Simply put, it builds upon the DJI Mini 1 and introduces significant improvements. For a start, the DJI Mini 1 uses Wi-Fi which means the range is extremely limited. In my case, I was only getting about 500 yards before the range was completely cut out. On the DJI Mini 2, you've got OcuSync 2, which is uh, DJI's premier technology for um, wireless links. Um, it's a stable connection. It'll go out to 10 kilometers if you're in America or Canada or anywhere which uses the FCC standard. If you're in the UK or Europe, you'll be on the CE standard, which will give you a maximum range of six kilometers. Although there will likely be hacks out um, in the near future to allow you to hack the drone because they, they are being heavily targeted. Um, the motors on the Mini 2 are faster and slightly more powerful than the, than the Mini 1. It's also got a slightly better flight time at 31 minutes compared to the Mini 1's flight time of 30 minutes. So slight general improvements all around. It features a three axis stabilization, again identical to the Mini One, but it's got a 12 megapixel camera, 4K capable, and it's most importantly features 100 megabit on that camera compared to the 40 megabit on the uh, Mini One. It's relatively expensive at £419 or £549 pounds if you're buying the Fly More combo, which I would recommend you do as one battery really isn't enough. As soon as you start flying, you'll really want to go further and get more perspectives and more shots. So that three battery combination is a game changer, really. Um, you're not going to find a better drone for the money um, from another manufacturer. They're just years behind DJI in this in this regard. Um, you all can go down the self-build route, but again, you're not going to get the sophistication or the abilities that this drone can give you for that sort of money. It's a, just a refined, market-ready product that's proven. Another thing about the DJI Mini 2, it's really light. It's actually lighter than the Mini 1. Um, it's actually sub, I think it's 242 grams or somewhere around there. So it's a lot less than what they're advertising. Um, so you can actually add things to this if you wanted to. Again, you're not going to find anywhere else that gives you anything near as good as this. Uh, the DJI software is good. Uh, you have the option of using that software or you can use third-party software such as Litchi or Drone Deploy. Uh, Litchi does give you the ability to have features on this drone that are normally reserved for DJI's uh, premier drones like um, waypoints and things like that. If you want to do um, 3D modelling and you have to take multiple hundreds or even thousands of pictures of different buildings from different perspectives, you're going to need some software to do that to automate it. Remote ID and geo awareness are not required for the legacy category of drones. Um, so you can actually disable um, remote ID within the DJI app and I recommend you do so. So you're probably questioning why I'm saying the DJI Mini 2 is the best drone now, but also it's going to be the best drone in the future too. As technology evolves and the continual uh, cycle and development of technology and drones continues, things are going to get better, yes. However, uh, the next generation of drones, DJI, are likely to um, adopt the certification, which means that all the, the characteristics of the drones, the design, the specifications, its ability and its functions are going to be heavily controlled by those uh, certification schemes, 
which means the top end speed is going to be limited to about 42 kilometers. The range is going to be limited to about 500 meters and the height's going to be limited to 120 meters. Right now, those are soft limits, in which case we can simply fly further. In the future, those are going to be hard limits baked into the hardware and the software. You are physically not going to be able to go beyond 500 meters or above 120 meters. They're going to be hard limits, which is mandated within the certification. Uh, companies uh, like DJI will likely remove some of the functionality that's currently in their drones. Um, so as they're using one app for all their drones, the new app, um, as, as they apply updates, will likely adopt these. So expect some uh, functionality on your current drones to be heavily limited in future. So just watch the update cycle of the apps and read the notes to see what the update is actually doing. Okay, now I'm going to cover some common questions which get asked a lot in forums and online and seems to be an element of confusion about these um, questions. First question is, do I have to register my drone? Yes, on the 31st of December 2020, the new regulations will stipulate that any drone which has a camera and which is not a toy, which is any DJI drone effectively, will have to be registered. And um, this is irrespective of weight. They're going down the route where if it has a camera, it effectively needs to be registered on privacy concerns. Um, both the DJI Mini 1 and Mini 2 will fall into this. They will have to be registered uh, come January. Um, in America, I believe the situation is slightly different. I believe anything under uh, 0.55 pounds is exempt from registration currently. This is likely to change as those category of drones become more uh, capable and um, the risk of privacy again will probably come into play. So eventually expect all drones irrespective of weight to be registered anyway. The next question is, can I fly at night? Yes, there are no restrictions on night flights. You will need to be able to see the drone and to see ground hazards, but it's exactly the same rules as the daytime operations. The next question, insurance. You will only need insurance if you're flying as a business or for commercial activity. In other words, if you're flying um, privately or for fun or just out uh, and flying about, you do not need insurance. It's not mandatory. However, I would recommend you go down the insurance route if you're doing a lot of flying uh, as it gives you an element of protection. Do I have to comply with GDPR? No. Again, if you're a private person, if you're flying privately or just for fun, GDPR does not apply. It's out of scope. GDPR only applies to business activities and commercial entities and police and council and you know, government it does not apply to private individuals. OK, what about privacy? Uh, privacy of uh, uninvolved people. In reference to privacy of people who overfly with the Mini 2, there's no definitive definition of privacy. It's generally understood that the Human Rights Act uh, would only apply where you would reasonably expect to have privacy. Uh, people in public, uh, people walking on the street, uh, in a town or city centre, or, people, or where people can be observed from a public place would not have an expectation of privacy, therefore privacy law would not apply. Your intention would also be taken into consideration in this regard, what you're intending to do. If you're flying on the street trying to get some commercial uh, aerial photography or just flying for fun, you know, it'd be fine, providing you're not going up to windows and trying to look in and things like that, but anything you can observe from the public place would be absolutely fine. Um, from my experience, if you experience people with um, privacy concerns or approach you or upset, um, just explain to them what you're doing, the nature of the flight and what you're trying to do. Also explain the limitations of the camera, especially with the Mini 2. It's only a 12 megapixel camera. You know, you'd have to be relatively close to an object to get a high res picture. Um, after that, they generally go away. They're generally quite happy and generally even interested in uh, watching you fly. Um, so that's the best way to defuse a situation like that. Um, also remember, by law, the drone is considered an aircraft. So anybody who's affecting you or endangering the aircraft is breaking the law. And endangering an aircraft is a serious criminal matter. Um, if you experience any of those people doing that, just contact the police, land and contact the police and just leave them deal with it. Remember, you are fully entitled to uh, fly in residential, commercial and recreational uh, areas so with the DJ Mini 2 you can fly pretty much anywhere as long as there's no fly zone or anything like that I hope you've enjoyed the video that's it for today guys have a good Christmas have a good New Year's 
and happy flying under the new regulations which come into force on the 31st of December. Remember, if you've got a DJI Mini 2, uh, keep hold of it because that's going to be a golden drone going forward and it's going to be one of the most capable drones in that category. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe. See you soon.